bronchodilators open up the airways and last for four hours or longer at 12 hours or 24 hours, depending on which molecule is in the device. This video is about short acting bronchodilators. In other words, they last four hours and wear off. Once they've been inhaled, you can expect them to start working within five minutes, relaxing the muscles around all of the airways, making it easier to breathe, reducing the symptoms of asthma, such as chest tightness, coughing, wheezing, and unusual breathlessness. The action peaks at about 15 minutes, lasts for four hours, and wears off. These inhalers do not stop asthma attacks. They do exactly what it says. They relieve symptoms. They do not prevent asthma symptoms, and they certainly don't treat them. So this is just for relief only. So short acting bronchodilators come in two different types of inhalers, uh, aerosol inhalers or dry powder inhalers. So let's have a look at the aerosols first of all. So the aerosol inhaler, the generic name, in other words, the molecule name is called salbutamol. This is an aerosol, in other words, comes in a canister which has an expiry date on it, so always check the expiry date before you use it. Normally it's about three years after you've had it prescribed, but it may not always be the case, so just keep an eye on the expiry date. Uh, this particular device doesn't have a dose counter, so you don't really know how many doses are left. So it's a good idea just to write the date that you opened it on the actual box that it came in, so you have some kind of idea uh, when you opened it, roughly how many doses you've used, and then how many more doses are left. So these ones usually come with 200 doses in each. Should last you six months to a year if your asthma is well controlled. Remember, you're using this for relief only, not to actually prevent and treat asthma. So for this, you give it a shake. As with all inhalers, check the mouthpiece. Check there's no foreign bodies such as crumbs or if it's been in a handbag for a while. You could well have the back of an earring or something like that. So just be careful, there's no, nothing there for you to inhale and choke on. So that's looking nice and clear. Give it a shake. Exhale fully first. Start breathing in and depress the canister so that you can take a full breath in and get a full dose of the medication like this. And hold for a count of 10. The count of 10 is important. A breath hold after the use of any device is important so that the medication is absorbed in the lung tissue and it isn't just sitting in the back of the throat or in the upper airways. Put the dust cap back on until it's needed again. So salbutamol comes in a variety of devices and depending on the company that makes them depends on what it's called as you see with this one. This one, similar, but not the same. Different size. This one's called Ventolin. Quite well known um, as a medication. It's been in production since about the 1950s. So Ventolin is made by a particular company and it's their trade name for salbutamol. Short acting bronchodilator. Works exactly the same way as the other one. And if, for example, you have manual dexterity problems, for example, arthritis in the hands, uh, the company actually makes something called a Haler Aid, H-A-L-E-R, A-I-D. The Haler Aid makes it easier to use the device, as you'll see. So the device is loaded into the Haler Aid, like so. So put it in there and then if you watch just makes it easy to use so someone that has got problems depressing a canister down may find the halo aid easier to use they're not usually available on prescription you normally have to buy those and it's worth also noting these come in the 200 size that is a device for an inhaler that has uh, 200 doses in it as opposed to 
120 doses. So it actually says on it the number of doses that the device should have in it in order to use that particular device. So you buy the HaloMade suitable for the size device that you've got. So that's 120 dose size or the 200 dose size. And generally you'll find they come as two completely different heights. Now, also there are um, some other devices that are aerosols, quite easy to use or easier than using the metered dose inhaler. One of them is called the Easy Breathe. If you have salbutamol in the Easy Breathe device, it's called the Easy Breathe device. So you have the salbutamol in there, so it's your reliever. The way this works is, shake it, as with all inhalers, drop the mouthpiece down, check for foreign bodies inside, looks nice and clear, exhale fully, inhale. And hold the breath for a count of 10. As you inhale this, you may have heard there's a it's like a puff. And you have to carry on breathing through once the Easy Breathe device has delivered the dose. So it's a, a puff of the inhaler and you keep on breathing in. Uh, it's just the way it operates. You then put the dust cap back up. Check that when you use it, you don't cover the vents at the top of this. It doesn't operate properly if you do. And that's good to go. Put it in your pocket, ready to be used again another time. Another breath actuated aerosol device is the autohaler. The autohaler comes with a lever on the top. In order to operate it, shake, take the dust cap off. It comes off a bit like a shoe or a boot. Okay, so you take that off, check the mouthpiece, there's no foreign bodies in there. Before you operate it, lift the lever. Breathe out, breathe in, and it clicks as it delivers the dot, clicks as it delivers the medication. Carry on breathing in through the click and to the top of the breath and hold like this. Exhale fully, breathe in, and hold for a count of 10. If you have salbutamol in this particular device, the auto inhaler, it's then called Aeromir, A-I-R-O-M-I-R. -I so Aeromir is the company's trade name for salbutamol delivered in this particular device. And this is a common theme throughout all devices. They all have different names depending on the company that's made them. So that is the autohaler. It still contains salbutamol, a short acting bronchodilator. Now, if for some reason you don't get on with terbutaline, uh, if you don't get on with salbutamol, perhaps it gives you unusual side effects that um, don't make you feel very well. Known side effects of all short-acting bronchodilators are tremor, palpitations, that is the heart beating fast, which can be really quite uncomfortable at times. These side effects tend to go with use. It is not usual for people to suffer those side effects all the time that they use them, but it's, it's, they're both well-known side effects. So for some people that are particularly sensitive to salbutamol, an alternative is a medication called terbutaline. Terbutaline comes in a turbohaler, and the turbohaler would have blue at the bottom where this is red. To demonstrate this, shake, take the dust cap off, keeping it at an upright or 45 degree angle, rotate the base of it forward and back till it clicks. When it's clicked, the dose is there, ready to be inhaled. Exhale fully. This is a dry powder device, so you may need a bit more what we call inspiratory drive to operate this and get a full dose down. Exhale fully. 
Inhale. And hold for a count of 10. Put the dust cap back on. Keep it nice and clean. Pop it in your pocket and that's good to go next time you want to use it. And then you follow the same steps again. So terbutaline, which is the alternative to salbutamol, if it comes in the turbo halo, in fact, it's the only device that is that you can get terbutaline in now. Terbutaline's name in the turbo halo, the company call it Bricanil. B-R-I-C-A-N-Y-L, Bricanil. It's a 500 microgram dose, so you only need one dose as required, no more than four hourly. Remember these inhalers, the short acting bronchodilators, last four hours, then they wear off. So no one should need to use these inhalers more than four hourly. If it isn't lasting four hours, then you really ought to be seeking urgent medical advice. Now there is a turbo inhaler aid that can be purchased for example, with the same as needing the halo aid for the sprays, if you have manual dexterity problems, this turbo halo aid actually helps with twisting this. So you just stand it in there, take the dust cap off, and instead of having to use your hand manually to turn it forward and back, this halo, uh, turbo halo aid does it for you so, so that's quite useful so that's something that could be purchased you need to speak to a pharmacist about that about how to get one so that is the turbo inhaler so remember all these medications the short acting bronchodilators last four hours and then wear off they're not to be used as a preventative in terms of asthma management you need to be on a steroid inhaler that acts as a preventative and this should only be used as and when required and certainly not more than four hourly. Another short acting bronchodilator that you may have been prescribed is something called ipotropium bromide. The trade name for this is called Atrovent. This works slightly differently to the other short acting bronchodilators and this lasts four to six hours and because it works differently to the others the common side effects with this particular device is or this particular molecule is a dry mouth some people can get constipation with it and some people can get bladder outflow problems with it as well they're not very common side effects the dry mouth maybe but the other two aren't but it's just worth being aware that that is that they're common side effects they're, they're well known so this works like a meter dose inhaler in that it is used ideally with a spacer device like one of these that i've shown in the other videos so that a full dose is inhaled rather than just partial a partial dose so for this shake take dust cap off inspect for any foreign bodies and then it's used the same way as the other ones exhale fully inhale and depress the canister and hold for a count of 10. So they are the short acting bronchodilators. Any of these you could have been prescribed. As I say, they're all called different names depending on which company make the salbutamol or the epitropium bromide. 